Good morning and happy Sabbath. It's a delight to be in the house of the Lord once again on this holy Sabbath day. Amen. Amen. This morning we continue in our series of health and happiness. And today, a continuation from last week's message, the third wave is here. And what does this mean for God's people? Looking more specifically today at dietary reform. So before we begin, let us pray. of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his air is inclined into their prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come in your presence even now, we thank you, Lord, for being a God who hears and answers our prayer. We thank you, Father, that we can come together and tabernacle with you once again, Lord, on this your holy Sabbath day, that we may receive of the refreshing each of us need from toiling through of a week of labor. So as we come to you, Father, please forgive us of our sin, our iniquity, and cleanse us, Lord, from all our unrighteousness. We ask that you be with each person that is here, and those that listen. Fill us all with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that our ears may be open to the things in which you have to say to us today. Father, I ask, Lord, that you will be with this message as it, as it goes forward. I claim what you said to Jeremiah that before I was in the belly that you knew me, Father which tells me that you have a plan for my life, but not only my life, Father, but each of us. So help us to trust the roads in which you allow us to go on. Help us to trust the tests that you allow to come our way, knowing, Lord, that you are right there with us. We thank you even now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Dietary reform. Last week's message... In the current events part of it, we saw a numerous of current events that are occurring because of the pandemic, which should have opened our eyes to the importance of the application of the principles of health reforms to our life. Did anyone come to that conclusion? That now truly it's time for us to live out health reform. We agree or we disagree? We agree. Why? Because the Lord wants us to prosper and be in health. And the only way that's going to happen is if we, along with God's help, apply those principles to our life. So I pray that as we go through this presentation that we will see the need for health reform and dietary reform more specifically, and ask the Lord to give us the power to do those things. Amen? So before we get into the presentation, let's sing our song. Let it begin with me. One, two, three. Let
us eat fruits, whole grains, and vegetables. Even the song is telling us a part of our dietary reform in which each of us needs to do. Amen? Amen. So as we continue in this series, as we said before, this series is going to help us to learn practical ways in how to deal with diseases and a lot of prevalent diseases in which we as a country and as a people are going through. We looked at some reasons for health reform in which each of the presentation has, pre presenters has been going through. And this week, I'm looking at number three, improving failing health for restoration of health, for maintenance of health, and happiness. A lot of persons are sick and they are not happy. How could you be happy when you don't know where your health lies, whether or not you're going to live for the next few days? I mean, how can you be truly happy? So God wants us to be in health, and he wants us to be happy. And also he wants us to develop Christian characters, we cannot run away from that. Because as I said last week, that our characters is the only thing we're going to take from earth to glory. So if we die having bad ways, we rise in having bad ways. If we die not having the victory over our appetite, it's going to be the same thing when we arise. Amen? Amen. So we want to make sure that we are practicing these health reform that the Lord can allow these principles to be carried out in our life. So let's turn our Bible to our main text for this study is Genesis 129. And this should be our memory verse. Genesis 129. Genesis 129. Okay, let's read it. Let's read it together. One, two, three. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree is the fruit of the tree yielding. To you it shall be for, to you it shall be for meat or for food. So that's the diet plan in which God created for the human race, which was Adam and Eve at that time. And this is the original diet in which he still wants his people to subsist on today. The grains with fruits, nuts, and vegetables contain all the nutritive properties necessary to make good, good blood. Life is in the blood, right? And this is what we need to develop good blood. In order for us to have good health, we need good blood. These elements are not so well or so fully supplied by a flesh diet. And what do we understand by a flesh diet? A meat diet. Had the use of flesh been essential to health and strength, animal food would have been included in the diet appointed man in the beginning. So we see here from this quote taken from child guidance that animal food was not the food that was appointed to man at, from the very beginning. And do we believe that God knew exactly what he was doing when he appointed us our food? He surely did. So animal food was not the best food which man ate even to this day. So when we look at Genesis 3:18, God added, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. So after man's sin, we see that he added the herbs of the field or the vegetable. So vegetable wasn't a part of the original diet, but because of the introduction of sin, then herbs were added to the diet. Now another condition in Genesis 9 verses 3 to 4, it says that every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb live, I give you how many things? All things. 
but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. So we see here that God gave no permission to eat anything that moved, but he placed a condition there that the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood, you shall not eat. So we see another condition here in Leviticus chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Verse 16 says, And the priest shall burn them upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savor. Read with me all. All the fat is the? All the fat is the Lord's. And it shall be a perpetual statue for your generations throughout all your dwellings. That ye eat neither fat nor neither fat nor blood. And he said that this was a perpetual statue. So that tells you that this goes on for every, yes, on and on for every generation that you should need either fat nor blood. Now, you think there's a particular reason why God knew that we shouldn't eat fat or blood? Anyone have any idea why we shouldn't eat fat or blood? What do you think is in it? The life is in the blood, mm-hmm. Diseases, yes, diseases. When you go to the doctor, they eat a biopsy, and when they biopsy, they take in part of the fatty tissue, and when they're looking for initial illness, they assess your blood to see what your levels are like, so that tells them how healthy you are. So God knew exactly what he was doing when he said, no fat and no blood. So if I decide that, hey, I'm going to have me a piece of fish or a piece of chicken, should it have the fat and the blood? Do we get rid of the fat and the blood when we fry it, boil it, bake it? No, we do not. That starts from where? The slaughterhouse, right? Or if you're killing it in the back of your yard, if you know how to drain the blood and cut off all of the fat, that's the process. So we see that that was a condition there that neither fat nor blood was supposed to be a part of the offering being made. And then in Leviticus 11, it gives a distinction between clean and unclean animals. We see a few weeks ago there was a outbreak of what type of poisoning here? Kong poisoning. Now you think we should have been eating Kong from the beginning? No, we should not be. Because Kong is an unclean animal. So from the pen of inspiration, the servant of God writes, the meat is serving racking, is served racking with fat. Pardon me? Thank you very much. The meat is served reeking with fat because it suits the perverted taste. Both the blood and the fat of animals are consumed as a luxury. But the Lord gave special directions that these should not be eaten. Why? Because their use would make a diseased current of blood in the human system. The disregard for the Lord's special directions has brought a variety of difficulties and diseases upon human beings. If they introduce into their system that which cannot make good flesh and blood, they must endure the results of their disregard of God's word. And that's taken from Councils on Foods and Diet, page 393, paragraph 4. So we see here that God knew exactly what he was doing. He knew that disease can be found in the blood. And if it's in the blood, that means if we eat it, it will be transferred into us, right? And this is why God doesn't want us to go through these difficulties and these diseases. So he put that stipulation there from the beginning. So when we look at some dietary conditions that are in the Bible, because some people say that there is no health reform in the Bible, can you believe that? But if we study from cause to effect, we can see the principles of health reform right in the Bible, amen? So we see that before the fall of man, Adam and Eve took part of a plant-based diet. After the fall of man, God added the herb, which were vegetables. 
because of sin. Sin brings destruction and deterioration to the body. So God gave us the herbs, which has that nice green chlorophyll inside of it, to give us a nice natural blood transfusions. After the flood, everything that lived was considered food as long as it was free from blood. The fat belonged to God, and it was not for consumption. And there was a distinction between clean and unclean animals. And unclean animals were not suitable for food. Not suitable for food. So knowing these principles that are written in the Bible on what we should do when it comes to food, then one must ask the question, what should we eat, right? What should we eat? So when choosing your food, I want you to remember that. Every habit that injures the health reacts upon the mind. So any habit that injures your health reacts upon your mind. And it is with your mind that we serve God, right? And this is why food is so, to me, important for us to know. Because it is with our minds that we serve God. And if our minds are impacted, can we truly serve God in spirit and in truth? We cannot. And this is why we have to proclaim this health message to our friends, our neighbors, and to a lost and dying world. Because many persons think that health has nothing to do with our spiritual life. So what must we eat? We must eat the rainbow. It's the reason why God gave us these fruits and vegetables, and we're going to see why. When we look at fruits and veggies, they have endless benefits. The different colors of the rainbow contain different nutrients and health benefits. And that's why in the public health system, when we teach persons on nutrition, we tell them to eat the rainbow because God wants us to have a variety of things. And we will see why the variety is very good for us. When we look at our red fruits and vegetables like tomatoes and beets, they contain a natural plant pigment called lycopene. And lycopene is a powerful, what it is? antioxidant, which I will explain later, but I want you to pay attention to these words, right? That can help reduce the risk of cancer and keep your heart healthy. When we look at orange and yellow fruits and veggies, they contain carotene. This is one type of carotene, it's beta carotene, which is found in sweet potatoes, pumpkins, and carrots. I remember when I first started a lifestyle change, I ate so many carrots that my hand turned orange. <laughs> I, it was that bad. And my son had the same thing. He, I gave him so many sweet potatoes because that's what he liked to eat. And when he went to the doctor, she said, you realize his hands are turning orange? What are you giving him? I say sweet potatoes. So it's, it's a lot. But we see that even though he, we had an abundance of those things, there was no negative side effects from eating those things. So there is no s negative side effect when you eat your fruits and your vegetables. It is converted to vitamin A, which helps to maintain a healthy mucous membrane and healthy eyes. But I'm still wearing glasses, eh? <laughs> Sin. Another carotene called luthanin is stored in the eyes and has been found to prevent cataracts and age-related macular degeneration, which can lead to blindness. So we see some benefits in our fruits and our vegetables already, right? It has some powerful antioxidants that has a lot of health benefits for us. When we look at our green vegetables like Brussels sprouts, they contain a range of phytochemicals, remember that word, including carotenoids, indoles, and saponins, and all of which have anti-cancer properties. Leafy green vegetables such as the spinach and the broccoli are also excellent source of folate. White fruits and vegetables such as potatoes and cauliflower, garlic, and bananas contain a range of health-promoting phytochemicals again. Allicin found in garlic is known for its antiviral properties, antibacterial properties. So we see if you fight in the fungus or you have a bacteria that you're dealing with an infection, you can use some garlic. 
Bananas and potatoes are a good source of potassium. Even the plants love potassium. Purple, blue fruits and veggies contain the plant pigment anthocyanin, which has antioxidant properties that protect the cells from damage and can help reduce the risk of cancer, stroke, and heart disease. We don't know half of the things that we are inhaling inside the air. All types of free radicals and things floating all about. So we need to beef up on our fruits and our vegetables because look, this is one purple and blue fruits and vegetable that keeps the cell from damages. So God knew exactly what he was doing when he told us to eat these things. So phytochemicals, that's something that was mentioned in the fruits and the vegetables, right? They are defined as bioactive nutrients plant chemicals in fruits, vegetables, greens, and other plant foods that may provide desirable health benefits beyond the basic nutri nutrition to reduce the rich risk sorry, of major chronic diseases. So chronic diseases such as your hypertension and your diabetes and your heart disease. Chemicals to fight those types of disease are found where? in fruits and vegetables. That's why it's so important for us to eat our fruits and vegetables because a lot of persons, even within our community, are fighting chronic diseases. And we see here that we have a, a remedy as simple as fruits and vegetables. See, it's so simple for us. <laughs> and that's why God used the simple things to confound the wise. It's just too simple. Eat your fruits and vegetables and you'll be healthy. No, we want to do all kind of extreme things and think that's the best way. When we look at antioxidants, antioxidants are substances that can prevent or slow damage cells caused by free radicals. As I mentioned, free radicals are that are not normally in the air from pollution. Unstable molecules that the body produces as a reaction to environmental and other pressures. They are sometimes called free radical scavengers. They go and run hunting for stuff. So free radicals are waste substance produced by cells as the body process food and reacts to the environment. So if the body cannot process and remove free radicals effectively, then oxidative stress happens. And that's where all your cancers start to occur because of all the free radicals and the body can't get rid of them. So this can harm the cell's body function and is also known as reactive oxygen species. So free radicals are very dangerous to our health. But what is one way we can help to get rid of our free radicals? Through fruits and vegetables. So God knows exactly what he was doing. There is an uh, article inside one of the health journals and they talk about the role of food and nutrition in cancer. See. What I, ten, how, what I have come to realize is that the world doesn't want to cure us. The world wants to put a band-aid over us. By, pardon me? Someone said money investment? Money in the medicine. I agree with you, sir. Money in the medicine. Don't get me wrong. I don't have a problem with conventional medication as it is today, and I put that in quotes. The problem I have with it is that they are not promoting healing. Emergency medicine is one thing, but things like chronic diseases, we need to be healed. We don't need a band-aid over it. And here it is that we have pharmaceutical companies pushing their drugs. Pushing their drugs to do what? To treat our symptoms. Let's think about it. I try my best to grow some tomato plants. My tomato plants are turning, the leaves are turning yellow. So when I assess my tomato plant, what I do? I go and I check in that soil to see what's happening with that soil, whether that needs some nitrogen, whether that needs some phosphate, just to see what it needs. I don't go and do some type of x-ray or find some type of medicine that treats the yellow leaves. Do I know as planters, no one does that. We go into the root of the problem and trying to solve the problem. And I'm so sorry, but that's not what conventional medication is doing when it comes to 
diseases such as diabetes and um, hypertension and heart disease. You know, it's being treated with a Band-Aid and not with a cure. And this is what this um, article was talking about. It's talking about those fruits and vegetables that are high in antioxidant and phytochemicals that's gonna help to treat the cancer. So we see that our food truly is our medicine. And even the health journals are telling us the importance of eating our fruits and our vegetables. But guess what? God tell us that from Genesis, right? But people aren't listening to the Creator. If we will follow God's plan, things will be so much easier. So when we look at, I mentioned some benefits of the phytochemicals already, some antioxidants that help to treat against prostate and colorectal and lung and types of digestive cancers. Other ones that I didn't mention were the fiber, fiber that is found in the fruits and vegetables, especially the green leafy ones. They help to reduce blood cholesterol and cardiovascular or heart disease as it is known. God also gave us the whole grains. Whole grains are packed with nutrients including protein, fiber, B vitamins, antioxidants, and trace minerals such as iron and zinc and copper and magnesium. All these things are found in our food if we will just eat like the rainbow. A diet rich in whole grains has been shown to reduce the risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, obesity, you know we are battling with that as a country, and some forms of cancer. Whole grain diets can also improve bowel health by helping to maintain regular bowel movement and promote growth of healthy bacteria in the colon. How many bowel movements should we have a day? As much as you eat, yes, Miss Sands, as much as you're eating. So if you are going the whole day and you're not having a bowel movement, something's wrong there. We need to check what it is that you're eating if you're not having enough fiber and whole grains in your diet. When we also look at whole grains, these are some examples. We have whole grain corn, oats, oatmeal, popcorn, brown rice, whole rye. These are just some examples, quinoa, 100% whole wheat flour, and I know there's a controversy out there with the whole wheat flour and the wheat, but these are some examples of some whole grains that we can partake of. He also gave us our nuts. Nuts are nutritionally rich foods, containing the most of the vitamins and minerals in, that the body needs. They are only one of the main source of ALA omega-3 fatty acid, offering a range of health benefits from reducing rheumatoid arthritis to protecting against Alzheimer's and dementia, heart disease, lowering cholesterol, and aids in weight loss. So my question to you is, if we eat according to God's plan, how many vitamins and minerals will the body obtain? 100%, anybody else, anybody disagree or they agree? They agree. So my next question to you is that, if we receive 100% of the minerals if we, and vitamins, if we follow God's plan, then why a lot of health reformers are unhealthy and they're eating, supposed to be eating God's way? Pardon me? not following the plan, I agree. As health reformers, we are not consistent. That's the problem. I can have a mic in the front, please. That's our problem. We are not consistent. And that's why people question our diet. And that's why people question our diet, because why we are not consistent. God has given us the plan, but if we follow the plan consistently, we will see the benefits of it. Right in front of you for me, please. Yes, ma'am. Is the mic on? That's the orange one. Try again. Okay. Yeah, it's on now. Go ahead. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Okay, I, I, as, as you was reading, my eyes was catching something say that unclean animals was not supposed to eat. Unclean animals were not supposed to eat. Yes. 
right there. I, I watch, right? I, I couldn't remember exactly where, but I saw it right there. The, um, in the screen, say unclean, an the, the, that, the, those unclean animal is not supposed to eat. Let me make sure, you, you're saying, I said unclean animals are not supposed to be eaten. Yeah, but what, about, what, about, what about the clean animals? Clean animals. Yes. Now, which one, we, which one God gave them permission to eat? Clean or unclean animals? I know the clean set, but okay. why? Okay, so That's we are not supposed to eat, never supposed to eat the unclean animals. That's what I'm saying, but um, did, did you say that we're not supposed to eat meat at all, or that, or that you say that um, we not only supposed unclean animals? I said God's original plan for us is a plan based I'm not, diet. I'm not, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not going against what you said. Y yeah, let me explain going up to it. Oh, okay. So after the flood, God gave them permission to eat the clean animals without the fat and without the blood. Okay. Okay. So, so if I'm, I thought it's um, that, help me Holy Ghost, is that uh, you don't eat the clean, uh, uncle the clean animals uh, after the whoever cut their throat and throw the blood out. I thought you did not suppose to drink that blood. That's what I thought. Okay. Well, they kosherize the meat, and that consists of draining all the blood, all the blood out at the slaughterhouse, and taking away all the fat. So all of that is discarded. No, they don't eat those things. Yeah, but um, can I say something? When I cook some, some clean, unclean meat, mm -hmm. I know it done, you know, it's just like I, I wash it and then put salt on it and put some um, um, salt on the sour mm -hmm. and then you wash it, uh, clean, wash it with clear water and you put some water in the stove again to, to really pour in the water. I mean, you take out all the skin and stuff like that. Then you p wash it with after that after you done soak it with the uh, salt and the uh, and the uh, sour and things like that. You wash it and after that you put some water in the stove. Now you throw it away now. Mm -hmm. The water, this twice water, you throw it away now. And then after that you put you you um help me Holy Ghost. You put some hot water in the stove. Okay. And then you you pour it over it. Okay. After that I ain't see no blood. Okay. So we could talk more afterwards. Okay. We can talk more after, but I just want to let you know that kosherizing the meat doesn't start when you start washing that on the stove and throwing off the water. That does not make no, it no, kosherized, no. okay? No, no, but so I ain't seen no blood at all. Got, that ain't nothing. <laughs> it starts at the slaughterhouse, okay? So we're going to, someone can take the mic to the other gentleman no, as I continue. You guys. Thank okay? you so much. So, oh, never mind? Okay, thank you. So as, we, as I was saying that, we don't see the benefits because we are not consistent with God's plan. So as, I, as we look at this picture here, minerals in our body. In our body, when God formed us, we had all of these minerals inside our bodies. And if you realize that the same minerals that are in our bodies are the same minerals and vitamins that are in our food. So if we are eating the way that God tells us to eat, then, and of course, eating a variety like the rainbow, then we will obtain those types of nutrients, those same vitamins and those same minerals to help keep our bodies healthy. Because, yes. So when we look at the chemical composition of the human body, the body is mostly made up of what? Water, yes, 62% according to this. Some of the numbers varies. So. If we are following the New START acronym, right, and we are drinking the amount of water that we're supposed to according to our body weight, will we have the right percentage in our bodies? We will. So that means we won't suffer from things like dehydration in our bodies. Our cells wouldn't get all shrivel up if we are drinking our water. Let's look at oxygen. If we are going out there inside the sunlight and getting the fresh air, will we receive the oxygen? We will do, but we have to be consistent in doing these things. The same thing if we have, if we needed to do um, calcium in our food, if we have needed potassium, and look at the percentage, potassium is 0.4%. We can eat bananas and receive that amount of potassium, but we have to be consistent. We, I might not know all of the minerals, 
But I know for sure if I eat like the rainbow, because why? We mentioned all of these minerals at the beginning when we talked about the red vegetables and fruits, the green ones, the white ones, the purple ones. Then we will receive a variety of minerals and a variety of vitamins in our bodies. So if we are consistent, if we have a, a variety, then the principles that God has already implanted will be seen inside our lives and our bodies will be healthier. So it says, I have a note here that minerals account for about 6% of the body. They include salts and metals and common minerals, including sodium, chlorine, calcium, potassium, and iron. The same analogy in which I gave with the plant. When I, when I see the plant turn in color, then there's a deficiency. And that's the same thing that happens to our body, so you know. But unfortunately, it's not treated the same way as the plant will be treated. So it's lacking phosphorus, then you give it some phosphorus. It's lacking some nitrogen, you give it some nitrogen. And the same, thing, same principle applies. I can have the mic to the front, please. The same principle applies with our food. If I am lacking a mineral, I could find that mineral inside my food. So that's why it's important for us to be consistent. It's important for us to, Sister McCullough, please. It's important for us to eat the way that God has asked us to eat. Yes, ma'am. Sister Cherise, I, I want to start with the plant. Yes. Um, you notice what you did. You didn't go and treat the color on the leaves. You went to the root, yes, sir. right? And the word constantly used is consistency. We cannot be consistent without God. If we are not consistent with God, no matter how consistent we are with the diet, it will not work. Because he says, he wished that we prosper and be in health, even as our souls prosper. So if we're not prospering spiritually, no matter how much we try to eat to keep ourselves going, it cannot work without God. Amen. And Sister Wigala, I'm glad that you said that because when I look at my life and when I am failing, I go back and check my spiritual life because my spiritual application is important and it, it compares to my physical life as well. So if I am failing spiritually, then physically, I am going to fail. Yes, I'm going to fail. So thank you very much for that comment. So when we look at deficiency as plant-based eaters, one of the things in which we can be deficient on is vitamin B12. And that's why they will encourage you to partake in vitamin B12 as a plant-based eater. Now, the sources said that vitamin B12 is an essential nutrient that is almost exclusively found in animal source foods such as fish, meat, dairy, products, and eggs. Now, question. Why is it that vitamin B12 is found in those foods? Anyone have any idea? And not, not directly in plants when we buy it from the food store. How come this one is lacking? Because what? It's found in, I didn't hear you. Okay. Vitamin B12, um, way back in the day, right? When, when those, they, the example that I found was those persons who, they used the African people who go there and they hunt and gather their food. Now, because our world today is, has become so hygienic and cleanly, we are lacking vitamin B12. Because let's say I go and I, vitamin B12 is found in the soil. So when I go there and I plant my potatoes and I reap my potatoes, we don't wash it as good as the food store does, or if I get my lettuce directly from the soil and I eat it that way, or if I go and I get some carrots and I eat it just like that, it's found in the soil. So that's how the animal gets it. The animal gets it from eating directly from what? The ground. And when they got their water, their rain water, or they, even some of them, they weren't as fortunate to have filtration system. They would go in ponds and gather up the water. It was found inside the water that way as well. But because we purify everything and we clean up everything so well, vitamin B12 is not inside the food. 
And a thought came to my mind too when, as I was sitting down, is that animal, when humans eat animal, we are like second class citizens because we are getting what? Regurgitated food, right? And as I kneel, I say, Lord, look at the spiritual application. Spiritually, some of us are becoming like animals too because all we want is what? Regurgitated food. We don't want to take time and study ourselves. We don't want to take time and go in our closet by ourselves. We want regurgitated food like the animals. So is regurgitated food the best food? No, it's not the best food. And spiritually, it is the same way. Regurgitated food, yes, it will help us spiritually, but it is not the best food. When you go in your closet one-on-one -on -one with the Lord, that's the best spiritual food, amen? Amen. So when we look at vitamin B deficiency, you see some symptoms like weakness, fatigue, impaired brain function, neurological disorders, and psychiatric disorders are normally some of the things that occur when you are vitamin B12 deficiency. And that's why many will advise persons to either have a supplement or, or you can purchase fortified food with vitamin B12. I know when I was pregnant, that was one of the things that I was encouraged to make sure that I beef up on because I didn't want my baby to have a neurological disorder because I know we don't get as much vitamin B12 in our food. Another deficiency as plant-based eaters is vitamin D3. But God and his mercies know exactly what he was doing, especially us who on this side of the equator, right? We have that beautiful sun out there to obtain our vitamin D. So are we going outside to exercise? Are we going outside to have a little sun bath so that we can get some vitamin D? I see our friends on the other side of the equator where it's so cold, they need to take a supplement for vitamin D3 because they don't have that sun. But any Bahamian don't have no excuse why they, sh why they should be deficient in vitamin D3 because we have plenty of sun out there, right? The only thing, our sister D did a presentation before I was talking about sunbathing, knowing the times to go out there so that you don't get burned. We can get burned as black people too, you know. Don't think you don't get burned. So you can get burned as well. So you don't want to go when the sun is really high and it's really hot. So you want to go in the early morning part of the morning or coming down when the sun is almost ready to set and then you can get that nice vitamin D. So vitamin D deficiency can lead to osteoporosis, cancer, heart disease, multiple sclerosis, and depression. I remember listening to Dwayne Lemon one time and he had this lady that, um, health reformer, healthy, and she developed multiple sclerosis. Why? She, she had some other stuff going on, but her main thing was that she never went outside to get any sun. She wasn't taking a supplement, and she was lacking in vitamin D. So vitamin D, the sun, you remember, I think Sister D, your presentation was the doctor in the sky, right? The doctor in the sky. So please take advantage of the free doctor in the sky. Because none of us want to end up with heart disease and depression and cancer and osteoporosis when we have a free source right out there to give us our vitamin D. What's meat intended for man to eat? As we almost halfway through. God gave our first parents the food he designed that the race should eat. It was contrary to his plan to have the life of any creature taken. There was to be no death in Eden. The fruit of the trees in the garden was the food man's want required. God gave man no permission to eat animal food until after the flood. Everything had been destroyed upon the earth, sorry, destroyed upon which man could subsist. And therefore the Lord in, in their necessity gave Noah permission to eat the clean animals which he had taken with him into the ark. But animal food was not the most helpful article of food for man. After the flood, the people ate largely of animal food. God saw that the ways of man were corrupt and that he was disposed to exalt himself proudly against his creator and to follow the inclination of his own heart. 
and he permitted that long-lived race to eat animal food to shorten their sinful lives. Soon after the flood, the race began to rapidly decrease in size and in length of years. You see the average years of man today? Man barely living to see 100, barely living to see 70. And before the flood, they was living in the hundreds. So we see that this is true. So God used the meat to shorten their sinful life. And that was taken from Councils and Foods and Diet, page 373, paragraph 1 and 3. Is meat eaten safe today? She says, I am instructed to say that if meat eaten were safe, it is not safe now. Diseased animals are taken to the large cities and to the villages and sold for food. Many of these poor creatures would have died of disease in a very short time if they had not been slaughtered. Yet the carcasses of these diseased animals are prepared for the market and people eat freely of this poisonous food. Such a diet contaminates the blood and stimulates the lower passion. And the lower passions are those, the base passion. We don't want none, nothing to do with those passions. We want our minds to be clear. We want our minds to be free. We need to be able to hear the voice of God. And if our lower passions are stimulated, the flesh overtakes every time. So meat eaten will eventually be done away with. So those who are still struggling with the meat, please don't give up hope. There are persons in here who are willing to help you in transitioning and even getting off the meat. She says, again and again, I have been sure that God is trying to lead us back. Where are you leading us back to? Eden. Step by step to his original design, that man should subsist upon the natural products of the earth. Among those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord, meat eaten will eventually be done away. Flesh will cease to form a part of their diet. We should ever keep this end in view and endeavor to work steadily towards it. So please, let's go. It's time for us to work steadily towards getting this meat out of our diet. Another food articles, uh, I can't even call it food that needs to be done away with too. It's junk food. Nah. Yes, yeah, sir. Junk food as well. I know I had my struggle. The mic to the front, please. You all know my struggle with french fries and potato chips. And if God could give me the victory, he could give you the victory. Amen? So the fruit juices. The fruit juices just have a lot of sugar inside it. Fruit juices are just water and sugar. Yes? Um, Sister Cherise, could you um, tell us some foods which contain zinc? Zinc? That's all your fruits and your vegetables. That's your bananas, that's your kiwis. Most of the fruits and vegetables of the citrus fruits too, they have zinc inside of it. So I can get you a list and I can send you a list, okay? Thank you very much. We mentioned much. some of them already. All right? So fruit juices and candies, potato chips. I was even surprised to find agave on the list until I really look at it and they talk about how high, highly processed the agave plant is in order to get their syrup. And you no, know, Brother Paul talks about the ice cream and the fast food. So these foods help, they help to deplete the blood because they take a lot of time to digest because I call them non-food because they don't give you any nutritional value other than they take away from the nutrients and taking time to absorb and digest and break them down to assimilate them. Let's look at the babies just for a short period of time. Someone can get the mic for me, please. So what shall I feed my baby? The sister Y says, sorry, go ahead, sir. What's wrong with eating french fries? What's wrong with eating french fries? I probably should have cleared it up properly for real. Thank you so much for asking that question. When I talk about french fries, I am talking about the french fries that one, we get from the fast food restaurants, and secondly, the ones that are deep fried in oil. That's the problem. Because remember now, in order to get french fries, it has to be fried at a very high heat. When you heat that oil above its heating temperature, it now, trans, it now turns it into trans fat. 
Trans fat is number one li linked to heart disease. So that's what's wrong with French fries. But what I found now, because I, I like French fries, is that I make my own. The best way to make French fries, Sister Hebron talks about an air fryer. An air fryer is wonderful. It requires less oil. All you do, I take a little capful, that's less than a, that's almost like a teaspoon or a little less than a tablespoon of oil. And all you do is cook that. You put that in that air fryer and it uses it, it heats up the air and the french fry comes out nice and crispy. So it reduces the oil, it doesn't heat that oil up to that high heat that causes it to turn to a trans fat which makes it unhealthy. Okay? You're not gonna eat that raw. Just like how they don't eat raw meat, they ain't gonna eat no raw potatoes. <laughs> All right, so let's look at that. I hope that answers your question. Okay, so what should I feed my baby? The importance of training children to write dietetic habits can hardly be overestimated. The little ones need to learn that they eat to live and not live to eat. All adults need to learn that too, amen? <laughs> amen, because some of us are like, we can't do without food. <laughs> the training should begin with the infant in its mother's arm. The child should be given food only at regular intervals and less frequently as it grows older. It should not be given sweets or the food of older persons which it is unsuitable to digest. So we know that, I'm gonna go through this part really quickly, we know that the breast is the best food for the baby. The highlighted part says that the nutrients contain, the nutrient content of a mother's milk will change according to the baby's need, even from week to week. Every mother's milk is perfect for her baby. And that's why I have to put in a plug for breastfeeding. When the baby latches on, the body, God made these bodies so wonderful that the body is able to sense the hormones that's being given off so that it can produce that same type of milk that the baby needs. So let's say the baby's breastfeeding and, and um, the body senses that the baby has a fever then the body will start to reduce antigens to try to help the baby fight that fever. So even during different times of the day, early morning and the evening, the body just picks it up and produces the right milk. That's why formula could never, could never replace breast milk. Now we know some women have some issues and that's a different category, but if you can breastfeed, please breastfeed. It says that there is no equal, formula is never equal to breast milk, okay? Also, looking at the timing, some babies go well on three hour feeding and some on four hour feeding. Remember that mother's milk digests much quicker than formula, so that's why some babies do more three hour feeding rather than four hour feeds. So when is my baby ready to eat? Because man, I see babies just get, what they call it, cereal, cereal and milk, three and Four months they're giving baby cereal inside their milk. I know that's what they were taught because when, when my baby was crying a lot, someone tell me, say, oh, put some cereal inside the milk that make him feel lucky and he'll go to sleep. But that was not the right thing to do, okay? So some requirements that tells us when the baby is ready to eat. When the baby can sit up by himself, remember too that it varies upon each child. Some children do it a little bit earlier than the other. When the baby can pick up and put food in his mouth, and when the baby has teeth with which it can masticate or chew food. So one thing I want you to remember is this important point, because this is where, why a lot of babies today are developing um, leaky gut syndrome, whereby part of their intestines is starting to rotten, is because they are introducing starches too early to the babies. So, when that first molar, you know those back teeth? When they appear, it's when the baby can eat starchy food. So that's your potatoes, that's your cereals, that's your bread, that's your rice. Why? Because it is not until those molars appear that the thylang, it's called thylang, but it's spelled with a P, is developed. This is an a, a enzyme that is used to break down the starch. So that's why a lot of babies get constipated as well. 
Why? Because the body is not ready to digest the starch. It's not because they're lacking water, it's because they don't have that enzyme to break down that starch. So that's why they are having that problem. So not until those molars appear should babies be having cereals and breads and rice and things like that, okay? This is just here too, for mothers who, when the baby reached 18 to 12 months and they began to wean the baby off the breast. Um, Barbara O'Neill calls this the vegetarian's milk. The combination of carrot and celery is a juice that can be made and the baby can be given. Carrots, apple, and celery. Even if you're having issues breastfeeding the baby at the beginning, this is something that can be supplemented as well. Carrot, apple, and celery juice. It has the right amount of nutrients, almost, almost, I said, almost similar to milk to sustain the baby as well, okay? So as we are about to close, we're gonna look at, I just said this state, state question. Speaking about babies, if we were in a famine, would you eat your baby? If we were in a famine, would you eat your baby? No? Sure. <laughs> if you were in a famine, would you eat your baby? Let's look at this example in 2 Kings 6. Hold on, okay? In 2 Kings, because our time is almost up, okay? So I'm just going to quickly go through this part. In 2 Kings 6, 24 to 29, there was a great farming there. And verse 25, 24 says, And it came to pass after this, that Behenadad, king of Syria, gathered all the hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. So what happened? A great famine occurred. So verse 26 says, And the king of Israel was passing upon the wall. There cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. And he said, if the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, what aileth thee? And she answered, this woman said unto me, give thy son what we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So did they eat one of the sons? They surely did. So we boiled my son and did eat him. So we see what famine cost. But I can't even say directly famine, right? But we see here that in an extreme situation that these two women made a decision that they were going to eat each other's children. And I want all of us to think about this because we know that Troubling, troublous times are coming, right? And we've, I read a quote that tells us that, that for the fear of wanting food and clothing, you hear that? Food and clothing, that men will transgress the laws of God. In Patriarchs and Prophets, I think where that is found in last day, when she talked about that human laws become so stringent that men and women wouldn't even dare to keep the Sabbath because of how tight the laws came. And we see here that a pressing situation was upon these women, that the famine was so bad that they agreed to eat each other's children. So that tells me the controlling factor of appetite on our choices. And if we aren't able to turn down the plate for a few hours and deny those hunger pains, then we are willing to do anything. We might say we won't eat our child, but we might transgress the Sabbath break the Sabbath because we need to go to the store or we just we need to sustain ourselves. These are situations that we must think about and we must prepare physically and spiritually now. 
And this is why it's so important for us to have that spiritual connection with the Lord because he will help us when these hard times come upon us. And we were, do we remember the account of Elijah when after the, during the time of the drought, when the water in the brook was running out and God told him to go to the widow's house and the widow, he will instruct the widow to feed him, right? God always provides for his faithful servants. And that's our only surety, you know. Our only surety is in Jesus Christ. And what he, we know that he can do for us. So just like how we sustain Elijah because of his faithfulness, he is able to sustain us in our faithfulness. And this is why we must believe the promises and we must stand and hold God fast to his word because he truly will deliver us. Amen? And we close with this quote, that the God who cared for Elijah in the time of famine will not pass by one of his self-sacrificing children. He who has numbered the hairs of their head will care for them. And in the days of famine, they will be satisfied. While the wicked are perishing all around them for want of bread, their bread and their water will be sure. Amen? We know troublous times are coming, but guess what? Our bread and our water will be sure on the conditions of our obedience to God. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. I must tell Jesus Most kind Father, we thank you, Lord, that we have that confidence to know that you will help us. Help us, Lord, to trust in you. Help us to believe your word by faith, that you will do exactly, Lord, what you said you will do. I pray, Father, that you will help us where we are weak. I pray, Lord, that the things in which we struggle with in our appetites, that you will give us overcoming power today. Lord, you see each one of us, you know our hearts, and you truly know if we want help. So I pray, Lord, that we will recognize our need today and turn to the feet of the cross of the one who is able to help us. So Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray, Lord, that as we go forth in this new and untrying week that's coming, that, Lord, we will cast all of our cares upon you and allow you, Lord, to lift up that standard in us that we will be overcomers. So thank you, Lord, for another opportunity whereby we can seek to get things right with you. And Lord, I believe by faith that you will render us the help that we need. So continue to be with the rest of this service, Father. Continue to pour out your spirit, Father, on your man's servant as he come, and even as they come and sing. Lord, that we may continue to experience this rest in you. We thank you in Jesus' name.
Amen.